Hello dear students, welcome back to science classes. Dear students, already you know that in our previous class we have started the lesson the fundamental unit of life and we have studied about the introduction about the cell and we came to know that cell is the basic functional structural and building block of the life. And also we studied history behind the discovery of the cell and which all the scientists struggled to discover the cell we have studied and we came to know the cell theory and cell theory containing what cell is the basic unit of the life and also we came to know that each and every organism made up of the cell and all the organism starts its life as a single cell and all the cells arises from its pre-existing cells. Is it right? It is about the cell theory we have studied in our previous class. And also we have started the next topic that is the types of the organism based on the number of cells. Which are those unicellular organisms and the multicellular organisms based on the number of cells I have said. Is it right? What are the unicellular organisms? Unicellular organisms are the organisms they, they are composed of only one cell. And what are the multicellular organisms? So they are the organisms they are composed of many cells. Uni means what? One. Multi means what? Many. So the name itself says the definition of the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism. Is it right? Now let us continue that topic. So in today's class we are going to study difference between the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism. Dear students, in, in previous classes you have studied about the difference between unicellular organism and the multicellular organism. Let's combine all those points and let us study in detail. So I have listed some of the difference between the unicellular and the multicellular organism. Let us see what it is. Let us see one by one in detail. First point is what? So as it is so as you know that it is a composed of a single cell and multicellular organisms are composed of a many cells. Is it right? So these unicellular organisms are made up of only one cell and these are made up of many cells. And next is what? They are irregular in a shape. Which are unicellular organisms are what irregular in shape and they are regular in shape otherwise they are having the definite shape. So you take example for the unicellular organism you know well amoeba is the example for the what unicellular organism even paramecium you can take uh, protozoa you can take iglina you can take so these are the example for the unicellular organism. So they are having the particular shape no they are irregular in the shape. Because only one cell they are containing. So because of that they are irregular in the shape. But in the multicellular organism you take your example only. You are having a particular shape. You take a dog example, birds example, even the plant example. They are having the particular shape. Is it right? So it is about the multicellular organism. So next is what the, here in the unicellular organism. Simple body organization we can observe. So simple body organization means here any complex organs will be not there. Only one cell will be there and that cell only performs all works. No any organs will be there. Very simple. In simple method if I will tell to draw the amoeba within a second. Within a few seconds we will draw the amoeba and you will show me. That only if I will tell to draw the structure of the human being. Internal structure of the human being means you take a maximum time. So it is a very easy to. A draw is it that means it's a having very simple organization in the multicellular organism it is a complex organization it will be containing a various organs various organ system and various it is containing a very complex organization we can observe in the multicellular organism not only human being you can take a variety of example for the what here in the multicellular organism you take all the multicellular organism they are containing the very complex organization but not in the unicellular organism. It is a very simple organization we can observe in the unicellular organism. Next is what? So the only single cell carries all necessary life processes. You don't know about the life processes I hope. So life processes are the what? So which, which are the processes which helps to maintain our life on this earth. Is it right? So which are those? It may be breathe, it may be respiration, digestion, transportation and the excretion. These are the mainly four life processes so which are very important for all the living organism to maintain their life. So it is animal means it should perform all those four life processes and it will be done in the unicellular by only one cell. 
all those life processes will done by only one cell and in the multicellular organism there are the various organ and various organ systems are present in the multicellular organism and each organ system different different organ systems will perform the different different life processes understanding so only what they have given here single cell carries out all the necessary life processes but in the multicellular organism multiple cells perform the different life process multiple cells means see digestive cell perform the digestion work respiration cell performs the respiration work and uh, excretion cell perform the excretion work when the transportation cell perform the transportation each and every cell will be specialized to perform the various life process in the multicellular organism but not in the unicellular organism only single cell will be there it performs all the life processes understanding and in this Yeah, next is the difference is the includes both eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. I hope you don't know about the eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In the next class, we are going to study about the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. Okay, uh, eukaryotes and prokaryotes are the different types of the cells. We can here say here based on the presence and the absence of the nucleus, they have differentiated the cell into two types. Those are the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. And in the unicellular organism, we can observe both. you carriers and the prokaryotes but in the multicellular organism you can observe only you carriers understanding so we here in the unicellular organism example we can observe protozoa fungi and the algae are the you carriers and the prokaryotes salmonella will be there is the example for what unicellular organism in multicellular all the vertebrates all the animals all the uh, many organisms you can example you can give in the multicellular organism those all comes under the eukaryotes only okay and all the multicellular organisms cells are made up of the uh, they are the eukaryotes only so we can take a various example for the multicellular organisms okay so next is what term about the life span in unicellular organism organisms they are having the very shorter life span so in very short time they die but in a multicellular organism they they live for a longer time their life span will be very long okay but in the unicellular organism their life span will be very small so next so in this unicellular organism they reproduce only by the asexual reproduction you know that in the amoeba how they reproduce by the binary fission what's the binary fission so they divides into the two nucleus two nucleus so they forms a two new organisms and then two to the four four to the eight like that what happens so there continuously there will be the divide the division one to two it becomes it is called binary means what a two so fission means what a dividation so one cell there is one organism divides into the two again again the, those two to four four to like what happen continuously they will be dividing this is called the binary fission so how, how it takes place by the asexual reproduction maximum it takes place by the binary fission in the what uh, unicellular organism asexual method by the asexual method only reproduction we can observe in the unicellular organism but in the multicellular organism both asexual method and asexual method also what they will use to reproduce their egg once is it right so reproduction will be done by sexually as well as asexual method but in unicellular organism only by the asexual method okay so next they are microscopic in nature you know that all the unicellular organisms we cannot see by our naked eyes we want to observe them means we should observe under the microscope only but in the in the multicellular organism they are macroscopic what is the meaning of macroscopic they are big enough to watch by our naked eyes okay this is about their size they are very size very small in the size we cannot say and they are very big to see by our naked eyes so next based on the example we have differentiated see here amoeba eblina protozoa and paramecium many examples are there for the unicellular organisms means few number of organisms so it comes under the unicellular organism but in the multicellular organism we can give n number of example is it right you take your say example human beings and cats tiger various example you can take on the plants those all comes under the multicellular organism 
okay so what we have studied difference between the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism we have studied some points i have listed here so i hope you all understood about the difference between the unicellular organism and the multicellular organism if you have any difficulty you let me know dear students so what you do you go on writing whatever i am writing on the board go on writing in the one of the note one notebook otherwise you make one of the notes book separately go on writing those all point so it will be helpful to clear understand the topics clearly okay make one book so to make the two parts in that book one for the to write the exercise question and one for the notes and what you do after writing the notes you click on photo and send it to my personal whatsapp number okay if you have any difficulty you ask me so in our next class let us study about the next topic that is about the structure otherwise size of the uh, size of the various cells we will observe, we will see in the next class thank you